Welcome back, guys. This is the Super Rifles podcast, this time on Thursday. Um, and with me, I've got a very special guest. It's Super, Super Kitowicz. He's making uh, YouTube guides about units and heroes even. He's a famous Nodachi player, I would say. Um, and I'm a big fan of his guides. I know a lot of more, a lot more players are as well. Um, but first of all, my name is CB. I'm the tournament organizer for CB Rifles. Normally, I have Corto with me. This time, uh, he's not here, unfortunately. I hope to have him back on the next podcast. Um, so you just have to deal with the two of us. Um, if you haven't noticed, CB Rifles is a community tournament that we started, or I started a couple of, uh, actually two months ago now. And the first season was a great success. We had a lot of fun with it. Uh, 15, 15 teams participated and it finished uh, two weeks ago. And the next season will start on May 29. Uh, teams can register until this Saturday, so May 14. We currently have 21 teams registered. And um, there might be a couple more coming, but if not, we will start with three divisions um, and way more about that in the next couple of podcasts. But that's that's about the leak, I guess, if you haven't catched up yet. Um, but more about that later, like I said. Uh, today we will talk about units, the meta. Um, perhaps you can get some units from Super Keto Witch that you might be able to use in your uh, sieges, who knows, um, in, in advance of new strategies. Um, so we'll dive into that right away. And after that, we will also talk about some of the unit stats because Super Super Kitty Witch has also helped me uh, with creating a database for the league. And we have been able to get most of the matches and all the stats into a database. And I hope to show you some of those stats. Um, it's not complete yet, but we will have it ready and fixed for the next season. So that's very exciting as well. Um, Kitty Witch, tell me about yourself and welcome to the podcast. No, welcome. Uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> uh, so I'm Super Kitoviec. It's the correct pronunciation, thank but you. everybody is <laughs> saying something like Super Kito because it's easier, I guess. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Super it as well. Kiwi for some reason. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea why. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm a programmer uh, uh, from Poland, and I really like to like understand how. Uh, things work before I use them hmm. so that's basically why I create the guys because like I, I would say that one of the reasons why Conqueror's Blade is so unique is how unreliable are descriptions in the game so <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to know things to nice. know how to play yeah yeah that so, makes yeah, sense that's I guess. basically it yeah when when did you start playing the Conqueror's Blade I think like I, I think it was at the start of the season five. Mm. I think so. I I my, my, I remember that first seasonal unit I unlocked was something like Zikalians and so on. Oh, so nice. it was around that time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those are some of my favorite tunes for sure. The Zikali and the Flamers. That's the good. Yeah, yeah. yeah so amazing. basically, you're saying because <laughs> this game has so many weird things in it and some some bugs. Maybe some, maybe a lot. Um, that's actually what makes you very interested in this game. Like the, yeah, kinda, the mistakes in kinda. the game. Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I would say that um, the mom for, for example, right now we don't have any new units coming mm. in, like, uh, and there are, I guess, no reworks coming because they didn't announce anything. Yeah. I think. Yeah, no big uh, ones yet. The, that's yeah. kind of. Uh, uh, like what to do now yeah mm -hmm. i have everything unlocked everything <laughs> leveled what i'm supposed to do so I... <laughs> yeah, exactly well uh, uh, one of the things that you do apparently is figure out uh, how units work exactly and how to use them the best even if some units seem like really bad um how do you how do you do that how, how do you approach the whole process of figuring out how a unit works if each if each veteran veterancy line or note works as it is supposed to be and, and all that. Okay, so maybe I will uh, fix one misconception. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to make, how to use the units the best way. <laughs> uh, I, I would like to like, uh, because at, at start I was trying to just uh, like provide trade facts mm -hmm. like this the this veterans he does too this and you can decide what to do with that yeah, yeah, yeah. because I, I i i will say that i'm not the best player <laughs> in this game <laughs> mainly because i'm like addicted to solo play so 
uh, I do strange things uh, for fun <laughs> and these are not the most optimal ways to play mm -hmm. I guess uh, so yeah, I just, I was just wanted to say that, but there was a feedback. Like most of the time, people just want to know like some suggestions. So I try to keep some. Uh, I I would say that uh, like my infamous uh, for me it's infamous mm. axe rider guide where I said that they are not worth using in melee <laughs> when they were OP in melee so yeah uh, i will just leave that <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly we'll just skip that one and, and do all the other ones yeah <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So, so yeah uh, th th that's about uh, knowing how to play yeah yeah I and yeah. about how how i do the guides uh, it's basically like when i started there was because right now we have amazing tool we have custom battles yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah. it's very easy and at start i was working only in a unit training like my first video was about imperial archers attack speed so mm -hmm. i could just shoot arrows in units training and mm -hmm. yeah and things like testing speed of horses but it was kind of easy yeah uh, but just like the most city. of the time <laughs> yeah exactly uh, like most of the time it comes down to killing off most of the unit mm -hmm. so you have like one or two models so you can actually see what they do and just looking at what happens when you attack and so on. So th that's yeah. how uh, things like, for example, when I discovered that Iron Reapers have CC resistance mm. because I was, uh, because before custom battles, uh, what I do was uh, in unit training, I was putting a cannon and killing them with cannon because this trash unit from training couldn't kill them. Oh, okay. And I noticed that they are sometimes uh, they didn't uh, weren't knocked down when I shoot with cannon with mm -hmm. them. So that's how I figured out that they are CC resistance, for example. Yeah, yeah. so that was more so of a coincidence that you found that out. Then. Yeah, like yeah. most of the time is just trying things, and uh, like I then I rewatch what happened, and sometimes there are some odd things, like for example some odd animation. Mm. And then I try to figure out what this animation means. Sometimes yeah, yeah. they mean nothing because <laughs> it's Conqueror's <laughs> Blade. So, so yeah, it, that, that's basically it. And right now we, we have, yeah, uh, we have custom matches. And I also got access to a tournament server. And oh, I cool. have second PC with second account, which also has access there. Oh, and uh, like our influencer manager was so kind that when I ask him, for example, for doctrines and so on, he mm. manages so I get them. So I have like almost everything I, I need on this oh, account. So excellent. That's very good. Yeah. My second PC, well, my second PC is uh, because it's not mine, it's mine, my, my fiance's. Mm. <laughs> So Did when you... she's not uh, using it, then then I can do yeah. some yeah. easy testing. Yeah, some true solo game in Conquest Blade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, so uh, like like to be honest, sometimes sometimes I just, uh, for example, like for f quick thought, and that maybe something works. In, I, I just have idea. I just ask some uh, housemates mm. uh, to for quick custom match. Um, but, but I just like to do it myself later to have like recorded it like I want yeah, exactly. because, you know, then uh, maybe they had some doctrine uh, which they forgot to mm. take off or something like that. Uh, if, if I do it myself, then I'm certain that everything is done correctly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so that's it. Like... You like to have a perfectly controlled environment uh, for yeah, yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because yeah. Is, well, if I know that like everything is controlled by me, then if something <laughs> is off, then I need, uh, then I know that there is some new thing to test, for example. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, just, it's easier to spot mm -hmm. the these these odd things that happen yeah. that shouldn't happen that's funny do you consider yourself a conqueror's blade researcher maybe <laughs> <laughs> because I it guess. sure sounds I like guess. it yeah. I, guess. I guess that that could uh, that's how it could be called conqueror's blade professor uh, have or, this, uh, uh, yeah. then there is this uh cb analyst discord so maybe conqueror's blade analyst yeah yeah true 
Yeah, that might be it as well. And now, and, and now you're also the CB Rifles data analyst as well. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. You're, so many titles. So many titles. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. And how much time does it take you to, like, figure out how how exactly one of those units works? Because I imagine it takes a lot of time, especially Too much. like for example with Too the much. block stat. That was that was crazy. Uh, but the block stats, it wasn't mine. So oh, that wasn't yours. Oh, my bad, my bad, that. my bad. Yeah, but... it's uh, by Alan Apogi. Oh, yeah, he did uh, all of. Uh, I was just uh, shooting at shields, oh, like okay. recording them, uh, and he he was counting pixels. <laughs> yeah, so that was a col co was collaboration like a... between you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it yeah. was collaboration. Yeah, yeah nice. exactly. So he's just as crazy as uh, you, then. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm not sure if you are familiar with attribute calculator, uh, which is the craziest thing uh, which anybody did for this game. So, <laughs> like, he figured out all the damage modifier of mm -hmm. all classes by just checking damage. It's yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah, I've seen it once. It's, it's insane. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. And, yeah, yeah, but it's, it's so cool. So because, about yeah. Uh, so about time it takes to figure out. It depends, I guess, because things like uh, alchemists or backpipers are just easy because mm. they don't do that much. Uh, or sometimes it's just, uh, for example, sometimes I don't test everything because uh, I feel like there is no point because there is <laughs> like uh, obvious one better way so uh, uh, like uh, at start i was checking everything uh, mm -hmm. even if it really didn't matter because for example you uh, would always have these veterans you know so it doesn't mm -hmm. matter yeah so uh, you you didn't test every single extra piercing damage or piercing or health or whatever no, no, st yeah. stats I never test because yeah. they, I, I just assume that they work because mm -hmm. they get added and if they didn't, then well, <laughs> Sucks. then we yeah. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, it's, so, it's so more about like, the, the special effects than, so the movement yeah, stats, yeah, the special abilities like, burn on the ground, for example. Like yeah. the damage, damage reduction and mm -hmm. things like that, because they tend to be off or range is always off. Yeah. things like that yeah, definitely. Uh, or just special effects because they are like the most uh, interesting things yeah. because maybe effect is good maybe it's not yeah, yeah it's, true. it's sometimes hard to tell if it's for example now you need to have more block break but you don't know how much it had before so mm -hmm. You don't know what impact it has. Yeah, exactly. And it's quite easy to test also. So the block break uh, is that, yeah, that's like, nice. yeah, yeah, that's like lo lo low hanging fruits. <laughs> uh, it's better to check them. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, and about time because I was uh, supposed to answer that. <laughs> uh, I would say sometimes, uh, for example, things like iron repairs. I think it was like one week or two. Oh wow. Like every day uh, of few hours a day. Uh, for example, I, I recall that I once tested the Polax rune. Mm -hmm. uh, there was this rune that you get more damage from HP, and there was this other rune that gave you HP. Okay. So I remember that I tested exactly if it were if they have <laughs> synergy between yeah, them, yeah, yeah. and and it took me like three or four hours mm -hmm. i was just uh, like t checking these numbers and then <laughs> typing everything crazy just so, to yeah, figure out if two runes time. interact yeah yeah and then even uh, they changed these runes and, and so, then yeah. it didn't make sense <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I guess>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, like uh, after such things uh, mm -hmm. i decided that i need to uh, optimize my <laughs> workflow a bit so yeah, exactly. uh, i started skipping things if mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like i said if you uh, like you have no choice mm -hmm. then it doesn't really matter yeah, yeah exactly it's all uh, about whether it makes a difference in the game at the end not of it yeah, yeah exactly because it's uh, like my goal my goal was always to make it easier to make the decision mm -hmm. so if there is no decision to be made then like no no yeah no that's point. that's actually a nice way how you said it because yeah it, it it makes a difference if you go top line or bottom line in a veteran c3 or maybe yeah, do a split yeah. but it it doesn't matter yeah, if, exactly yeah something else yeah 
All right, that that's really good. Um, so with um, what what units or maybe weapons, but I guess units make the most sense because there's there's so many more units. Um, what what units do you think are really interesting, but people haven't figured out yet? If you want to, if you, if you still have some left. Uh, for for example, Rattans. Rattan Vipers? Uh, like or the uh, Pikes Vipers, yeah. Pikes. I've been yeah, using the Rattan uh, Vipers a lot the uh, last two weeks. They are so fun to use, actually. Yeah, yeah because the effect is so strong, mm -hmm. but it's invisible. Uh, mm -hmm. And my, my main problem with them is that you know that enemy is poisoned and that he will do, deal no damage to you but mm -hmm. your allies do not yeah exactly so they are the problem is that for example maybe somebody is running but he shouldn't because he would win yeah because they are poisoned yeah, but exactly. there is no way for him to know that yeah so um, uh, until he gets hit by the reapers that that is like 300 damage and then he's like oh I can yeah. stay alive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so there was this video by Nat Stoker mm -hmm. uh, about vipers, and I really liked it because I was uh, them. He made it so uh, ap approachable to people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true, true. They are amazing units, and I was like, oh, maybe now people will start using them. Uh, like more people will use mm -hmm. them and uh, just because uh, like I said the main issue with them is that somebody needs to know how they work to take advantage of that yeah. and if nobody takes advantage of that then uh, you get no support points and you, you yeah, are sure. at the bottom of the board so, yeah. <laughs> exactly and then F was so, like what are you doing uh, AFK with the range unit yeah. yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah the, the, that's basically why I like and like I, I personally I prefer pikes because mm -hmm. I play no Dachi so uh, like uh, archers are not very useful for mm -hmm. me but with pikes uh, you combine the damage reduction with healing yeah and suddenly uh, you are god like yeah that's so a really strong that, combination that's, that, that's a very yeah very very good combination yeah. yes suddenly you so can, yeah that that suddenly you can turn a unit of reapers into uh yeah I don't know like sword militia or something <laughs> Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it is very funny. And, and, and the worst thing is that somebody will kill these repairs and they will have the great stats. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's also know, the, so... that, that is something that is really overlooked, I think. If you play a yeah, unit like uh, the, the Retin, the Vipers, or the Pike, or uh, even the, the Healers, the Alchemist, if you play them really well, your team doesn't often even notice that, that it makes such a big impact, like but, you said. But. Yeah. I wanted to mention Alchemist, mm. uh, that you ha we have two support units, yeah? yeah? We have Backpipers and Alchemist. True. And I guess both are good. Both ha are, have strong like impact, mm -hmm. but with Alchemist, when you play them, you have healing numbers pop up. Yeah. So when you play them, you see what you do, and it's like nice. Uh, or uh, you have like this uh, instant uh, gratification because mm -hmm. Uh, I, I I think I'm so, so somewhere I made already this comment that uh, with alchemists uh, like my horse is almost dead but I can <laughs> move to them and they will heal up him and now I don't need to run to supply point and yeah. it feels good yeah, yeah it feels really so good. it's uh, like yeah. it's it's like this uh, direct impact on the game exactly it's very uh, so... it, it's very addictive to see all those green numbers pop up it's it, it's almost like being yeah, at exactly the, at, at the slot machine uh, where you keep getting uh, yeah keep, keep, uh, it's keep like the money. same thing if you uh, like throw uh, with Sicalia militia you throw grenades yeah. and um, <laughs> so many damage numbers it's like only 300 yeah but so many and it feels good yeah. and uh, if you pop the first aid at Alchemist you have so many healing numbers yeah, so it just makes you it happy. feels good mm -hmm. exactly yeah absolutely so I, i'm thinking that they already added this uh, blocking indicator which yeah. is nice yeah, that is, and that is uh, I would like them to add some indicator that uh, someone is dealing reduced damage because of mm. you somehow. That, yeah. that would be nice. Like that, you that, see that, that really hit, but yeah, yeah, yeah then, then you would see the impact. So you will have like incentive to play this uh, yeah, exactly. unit because it's it's not really fun when you like you know you can imagine that uh, they are working but mm -hmm. you are not really seeing that yeah, so exactly. unless enemies hit you then well yeah true oh it's... and i wanted 
because about these uh, interesting units let's oh, say yeah. I, I because uh, right now i have uh, like this uh, I, i'm trying to my, make c is great mm. <laughs> i i, I <laughs> because, appreciate that actually i really like the units yeah, yeah be, so yeah, what, because they me. are they are so unique that they have one unique thing, mm -hmm. which is amazing because they charge is completely completely interrupt. You, you cannot stop their charge in oh, any way. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. just no, nothing in the game game stops their charge. Not even imperial which bike is offense. Kind of, uh, no, they not, they they die when they <laughs> charge <laughs> imperial All bikes. Right. It doesn't stop but, it, but they die. Yeah, <laughs> but they but they but they don't stop. Okay, For example, okay. flamers don't stop them, mm -hmm. and uh, they will stop any other calf. So, uh, and I was thinking, like axe riders were OP because they could just go through everything yeah, and sure. kill the backline. And in theory, Tifais can do that because they are cannot be stopped unless yeah. they run into pikes or modaos or any other unit which kills cavalry. True. So <laughs> they are. They are kind of, they have this nice feature, but it's not really useful, unfortunately. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's, it's not I, working I was until really, now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just hoping that somebody will uh, maybe win some tournament, somebody will figure <laughs> out a way to use that. That yeah, exactly. was like my, my dream, that somebody will take this unit, which mm. have some nice feature, but in general is useless. But if you know exactly what you are doing with them and how to use them, maybe there is some specific use case and that would be really fun to see in the tournament. Definitely that's would like be. My yeah. Yeah, so, so, so with this, you're making a shout out to all the teams from CB Rifles to play the yeah. CPs next they, season. Take C5. Yeah. And, and maybe <laughs> exactly, also backpipers, exactly. even if their sound is really annoying and you don't see any, any numbers pop up. Just play the backpipers. Yeah. Play the, uh, for the... example, mm -hmm. uh, I would just say that if you have, uh, let's say, Imperial Spears mm -hmm. or uh, let's say Omo Daos, because it's more uh, like very thank you. Yeah. And, and uh, imagine that Short Sword is breaking the formation with Ultimate and Cavalry is coming to run them over. But if you have backpipers and you press free, then it will instantly stand up because yeah. it cleans the CC. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I'm just saying. It is, Just it is really good. good. Yeah, it can be extremely good. The funny thing is that I start realizing now that we are talking is that at the start, you said you are a, a true solo player or, or you like to play solo and you take that to the extreme by playing with two computers uh, for the same game. But at the same time, exactly. you like all those units that actually require a lot of teamwork. How does that work for you? <laughs> uh, it doesn't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly, that's my problem. Yeah. But um yeah i i don't know i i think i have hard time like figuring like the strategies mm -hmm. i uh like um, think of or i'm coming up with are not very good <laughs> in, <laughs> in like general series because uh, i would say it's more like cheese tactics mm -hmm. but this like in this specific situation it can work extremely well but in many situations it won't work at all so it's not very yeah. useful yeah. Uh, in like general play so mm -hmm. I, I like just coming up with these strange strange things yeah and then and, and then you and hope that honest, some teams pull it off yeah <laughs> yeah but and to be honest the thing about solo playing is just i have very um, like uh, a random playing schedule mm. and sometimes i like play one match or two or sometimes i will just afk in the middle of the match because i'm doing something else Oops. and things <laughs> like that so it's not really compatible with playing with other people because i would just troll them or yeah. i need to i i would need to wait for them and i have like time for <laughs> exactly one match mm -hmm. but now i need to wait five minutes for somebody and now <laughs> i don't have time for the match yeah, so exactly. yeah that, that's my like issue yeah that is definitely an issue in a team game for sure yeah yeah D despite all of that it's it's still a really good game and so i guess that something that would be ideal almost for you is if if a team takes you in as their um team comp researcher and, and and you get to tell them what combination of units works extremely well and in synergy with each other and then they should win the tournament with it 
that would be ideal, right? Uh, I guess, my yeah, guess. Uh, might, uh, might uh, I, could, I think, I think maybe uh, my house w w won't agree, but I think <laughs> that uh, so somehow, somehow I do it already because I, if I uh, find that some unit is stronger or can do something, mm. they are probably the first one to know because I will just uh, like write about it or something yeah, on Discord. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's but nice. like I like I said at the start, I like to like provide this info, and somebody uh, is better than uh, if somebody will figure out what to do with that. Yeah, because, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, so you just hope that some good players will take the info, use it w really well in in a tournament or in their ranked games, wherever, and and show off with the unit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, I know that and I can then see that it works and I'm happy. Yeah. And I, yeah, exactly. Then you're also happy. Just as happy as when you see the Zikalian militia damage numbers uh, or the alchemist. Team exactly. Numbers. Exactly. Yeah. It is nice. Um, so uh, I know that you've watched some of the finals. Did you also notice that uh, one of the players from Pondguard tried the new uh, cavalry unit? Because they had figured out something that it actually may work um, with this unit. I, I didn't really see it. I, oh. I think I saw that, but, but uh, to be honest, when like watching the votes, it's mm -hmm. hard time to, uh, it's rather hard to see what exactly, where is this unit and what it's doing. Yeah. So yeah, it's very true. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't think I noticed that. Yeah, uh, uh, but yeah this new, new curve is interesting. Let's yeah, say. <laughs> that's absolutely. Yeah. It, it is very interesting. Like uh, at first, I believe everybody, everybody was like, oh, interesting, another unit with it, but well, I wonder how it does, right? Um, then the caps seem to be really bad, but so what they figured out, maybe you know it, but I'll explain it anyway and um, we can talk about it. So if the calf charges in and it has the crossbowman as retinue, then yeah. the crossbowman <laughs> will deal a shit ton of damage. Like they will shoot extremely fast and kill any hero and almost any unit. Um, but the calf almost doesn't yeah. do anything. So the calf is just there to facilitate the crossbowman, you could say. Like, uh, I think like in this let's say circles which test the units mm -hmm. uh, and they were called the reverse houndsmen yeah because the yeah like the yeah exactly the yeah box. that makes sense because and, yeah. and, and crossbows are the archers mm -hmm. so yeah that, that's basically it but uh, i will say that like recently uh, because at first i agree that these crossbows were deleting everybody mm -hmm. all the time but I think that uh, a lot of people already notice that and they just go for the crossbows. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing, right? Because they, it's very easy to kill them. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I was wondering <laughs> if there won't be a switch for this mass cavalry, cavalry with cotillers and so on to just like uh, create chaos uh, in the ranks of enemies. Yeah. Because if you have suddenly, what is that, like 30 cavalry coming from one player? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty, uh, that's quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, that is quite yeah. a lot. Yeah, it can be scary. Uh, the shock effect can also be very real, especially if it's not a coordinated play, because, yeah, people can freak yeah, and, out. Uh, if especially if you put a uh, good attire on cotillers mm -hmm. and you have no idea what is coming. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, like, that, that does uh, help, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that is something that you cannot test in. Despite all the specific research that you do for units, um, the effect of unit attire is something that you probably can never test, truly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or you would uh, have to the, test the, uh, the fear in the players uh, when they see the unit coming with a specific unit attire. I think there is some attire that makes hussars invisible when they charge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is. Uh, yeah, some, some, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's really stupid, and it's it's actually one of the reasons that um, I bent. Uh, I told people to uh, not use the unit attires during the custom lobby, which is really easy. You can just turn off the unit attires. Um, yeah, so, yeah, and it, it also makes it easier to watch the units. Like you said, um, when you see fifteen v fifteen on Conqueror's Blade in a custom lobby, then it can be very hard to follow what's going on in the battle. So. Yeah, especially um, yeah. that there are these attires where you don't mm -hmm. see the colors at all. Yeah, you don't know so, what unit it is or it's all the same color. Yeah, that's very confusing. Yeah, so, 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 suddenly there is like one blob of same unit and you don't yep. know what is yep. going on. Yeah, that can be very, very weird. Yeah, yeah we'll see. All right. Um, 
what do you think about the the meta then right now uh, also from what you've seen in the tournament and and also what you see in your your games no i think that <clears throat> there is more infantry like right now mm -hmm. and i like this a lot mm -hmm. because uh, uh like there was this time where there was kashik everywhere and everybody was complaining uh, I must say that uh, as no that it was quite easy to kill no Kashyyyk, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but now for me right now, uh, Kashyyyk are just sad because I, I see them charging all the time and I feel like they don't kill anything. So I'm wondering if they didn't overdo the nerfs because I, I was always saying because people were like reduce their damage, reduce their damage. Yeah, but mm -hmm. if you have wishy cavalry which uh, only thing is killing things and you take away damage then what's the point of this unit like it's obvious that they will be trash and nobody will use them so yeah uh, I, I i i was glad that they went like dif different direction with this removing days and uh, some uh, removing the range and things like that mm -hmm. so now uh, and with that said uh, like uh, ah, and other thing was that Kashyyyks were super easy to use so you just move them in press one button and you get results yeah and yep. I feel like th that's like the, the definition of meta units right now because you have modals which you just press one mm -hmm. and they work you don't uh, for me it's very fun because they have free skills but and you can perfectly control them uh, like uh, with 100% uh, performance mm -hmm. or while being on the other side of the map <laughs> right? because all you need to do is you have them braced if you see that they hit something then you press two and press one yeah and they and yeah and uh, that's it yeah, yeah so they, they are they very keep, easy to use they will keep walking for it yeah it's almost like the Le it, it, it's it's not as good as leo rangers that you could just press one two one two one two but it's it's similar in a way I understand, and it's yeah, uh, it, it, and like it's also the same the... with the with the cylinders, right? That they, they also have the two, which makes them charge in a little bit, and you press the one. Yeah, but uh, I would say that the cylinders are not really uh, that they, they won't be so like like for, from mm -hmm. what I tested and how I played them, I feel like they won't be so common as let's yeah. say iron repairs. I agree. Because what is the difference? Uh, still then? iron repairs. Still iron repairs is you move them in and press two mm -hmm. and that's it they are killing everything and they cannot be stopped which is like the key part because with cylinders you can cc them and they are dead yeah. uh, or you have skills on cooldown and they are dead uh, but with repairs you can always just move them into enemy let's say they have a lot of range or something too close you can move three pairs there, press two, and you will get the kills no, one, no matter what, because nobody can stop them. Yeah, 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 so exactly. that, uh, in my opinion, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And Scylla does just a uh, few players jump on them and they will daze them, knock down, and they will just... Yeah, die. true. So they definitely like need a, a, a bit more support compared to the Reapers. Yeah, yeah. yeah like my opinion on them is that uh, ah, because uh, there is, we have Reapers and we have Palace Guards, mm -hmm. which are also meta unit because they are cheap and they can kill any other unit. Yeah, I can thank uh, you. If you well. brace mm -hmm. them correctly, mm -hmm. uh, which is, uh, for me, it's, I, I, I'm not sure if, I, I guess they are a, a bit too overpowered because nobody, uh, like, no, everybody wouldn't use them if they weren't, yeah? Yeah, true. Uh, but, but it's kind of nice that uh, you, they have this skill and you can, like, work around it. Like, you know they will brace mm -hmm. and they will kill you, so you bite the brace or exactly. you... And for example, if I or... engage them with Reapers, then I will move in, they will brace and I will move out and mm -hmm. wait. Exactly. I will lo lose few models, but not all, mm -hmm. not whole unit. Yeah? yeah, so you can do something about that. Yeah, you can definitely uh, still play them. Yeah. So yeah, you have these two like frontline units. Let's mm -hmm. say uh, I would say Reapers and Palace Guards are like core units because they are just easiest uh, to play with, and uh, I think that's the key because uh, you need you have to have easy to use unit. Because when you have you are in the big fight and you get twenty FPS, you cannot control anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
that, that, that is true as well. Uh, and I, I guess not, not <laughs> like I would say. Mo I, I did a pool on my channel, and uh, a lot of people is playing like at uh, less than 40 FPS and something like yeah, that. that yeah, that's, that's so actually might be effective. You cannot really, mm -hmm. you you cannot really micro your units, so you yeah. need to have like easy to use units which you move in press mm -hmm. button and they do their thing yeah. and then when these units go forward you can go in with the others that's yeah, like exactly. my opinion that you need some front line to take the damage mm -hmm. so reapers or palace guards and the others as a support to like everything tries to kill reapers and you go in kill them with the others mm -hmm. and you can move back because you are not on the front line the reapers are on the front line Yep. Because if you are going in first, then you will kill what you are attacking, but you will also trade your... Yeah, you also die strike. as well. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. And so, it's so... not really worth it, Yeah, in my opinion. True. Yeah. So about the FPS as well. I know that in the tournament uh, that I played, uh, this is something that uh, most of the NA teams also talked about with me, is that um, uh, they have lower FPS as well. I live in the Netherlands, so I have like I have actually really good FPS because I'm so close to the surface. My ping is really low. I have I think I may have one of the best conditions for playing. Like I I, I almost have none of the complaints some of the players have, so I'm lucky. Um, and I know that for example in Frontier on tournament server uh, teams play a lot more hop sergeants, for example, and not just because of leadership, but also apparently because the hop sergeants require more um, precise like positioning and bracing as well and they can deal a lot of damage like i've i've played them a few times with uh with some friends and they they can be extremely good but because they require like the fort Virtue, more precise control i guess people don't really get to play them to how good they can be and that's yeah and they also need a lot of support of course yeah i feel like because they have very good stats mm -hmm. so in theory if you have front line which suddenly won't move away and let them die mm -hmm. they can deal a lot because uh, uh, you you will always see that the moment they start like swinging at players they just die instantly because they have so much penetration yeah, so they exactly. can just kill everything Same but uh, they are also uh, it's like all the units which has no days resistance mm -hmm. they are so so just if there is uh, two players, they can just hit them and daze them into, like, stun lock them with basic attacks. So yeah. you need to have some support, and it's hard to have without, uh, like, organized team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they are, it's, it's always about team, right? They, that's also what you can see in the tournaments, of course, which is really fun. All right. Um, despite how much I would like to continue this conversation, um, because it's so interesting to talk about <laughs> units, um, we might have to do it again sometime. Uh, we can just continue after okay. recording this podcast, but um, I, I do want to move on to uh, the stats from the tournament as well, if, you, if you're if you okay with that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to show some of the stats. Uh, you can see them on my on my screen as well, right? Um, that we got out of the, the, the database uh, right now. And uh, what we did is um, I asked all of the team captains to make screenshots of their team stats. Um, and that is... Also the proof, of course, that they finished their game and that there's a certain result. Um, and that allowed me to use those screenshots. My brother made a, a code for it to read those screenshots. And that's how we got all the stats without having to type all of it. So that's really good um, because it would take way too much time to type out all of the stats, which I actually did once for the R tournament too, um, as a prep. Um, so that's what we did. And then Super Kitty, which you were so kind to actually help me with, uh, in, like, getting all the screenshots into the database and correcting some of the things that went wrong. Um, so that's what allowed us to get this. And I'll put, put it on the screen and we'll just tell you what it is. So warning, not all of the games have been uh, important, imported into the database. Oh, we are missing about 20 games, right? Yeah. Yeah, about 20, 20 well, games. Think. Yeah. So I think most of them are Chocolate Paladins and Jack Ultras, I think. That those were two of the teams that forgot quite often to get the screenshots and then had to get it from the stream. And then quite often there is a caster face in front of it and then you just can't get the good results from it. So um, get your face out of the screen when you're making the screenshots or your mouse. That's also in the way quite often. Um, but anyway, this is what we get. So um, we can select how many unit kills 
uh, one player has gotten over the season. And as you can see, uh, from what we got so far in the database, Blame Elias has been doing a lot of unit killing. Um, Blood Story is in the top, then Rafo, Elias the Veggie, Ugurai. Uh, then we got We Are Clowns with Kicker and Mixnu. Blame Elias again with Soul, Blame Elias with Fallen Ronin, Blame Elias with Mr. Talk, Blame Elias with Lazy Imperator, and Blame Elias with Lama the Cray. Um, so a lot of Blame Elias, they've been doing a lot of unit killing. Um, but that's also partly, of course, again, because we're missing some games. But if we go down to the top 20, we get to see that uh, actually there's a lot more different teams as well. We get Slavs, Bondguard, Triarchy, Triarchy, Blame Elias, Surf Slayer, We Are Clowns, Blame Elias, Bondguard, and We Are Clowns. Um, I'm actually on 14, happy me. Um, so this is really interesting. We get to see how many unit kills has a team got or a player got. And we cannot only get the kills, we can also get or the hero kills, for example. Uh, let's see what that looks like as well. Uh, and there, I think, to no one's surprise, and even with the edit uh, games that we haven't implemented yet, uh, we are Clowns Kicker Amia on first place with 48 unit kills. Uh, followed by Bloodstory from Blame Elias and Soul also from Blame Elias at 43 and 42. Uh, Soul is tied with Silver Rex from We Are Clowns also on 42. Followed by Ugurai, Elias the Veggie, Lazy Imperator, Brave and Fallen Ronin and Arna Nore. And once again, uh, Blame Elias just are killing a lot of heroes, killing a lot of units. They are a very aggressive team. team. We've also seen it in the finals, uh, which is probably one of the reasons why they did so well there. Um, and if we go down a bit, you can also see more players from We Are Clowns, from Surf Slayer, uh, and also from Pond Guard, and also one from Slaps. So, yeah, is there anything that stood out for you um, when you like put in all the data in a database? Mm, let me think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, yeah sure. I guess it's uh, a lot comes down for, for example because we have these stats for the like full teams, so it's not that important. But uh, like when I was looking at the stats and uh, I know that there are shoutouts for MVP and something like that, mm -hmm. I was kind of feeling sorry for people who were taking units which do not get the scores. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's a bit a, a bit unfair, I guess. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's what I was thinking that somebody will get this. Yeah, uh, uh, high kill machine units mm -hmm. and yeah, I got a lot of uh, great scores. Yeah. Uh, so so yeah, yeah. yeah. That that uh, like uh, before the podcast started, we were uh, talking about that. That mm -hmm. it would be very nice if they gave some more stats, so uh, we could like um, give some prize to these players who are like doing other things than killing. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I guess the to do. Other, the, this, the, this the support other points is one game, thing, yeah? right? Like. The support points yeah, actually the, yeah, give you something. Yeah, we have support knights yeah. now, but I guess they are tweaking them um, still. But, mm -hmm. uh, but but I feel like the support points are just because uh, you have unit kills and you kill units, you get unit kills. And support yeah. points is like mix of everything, so it's hard to tell what that means yeah exactly that's to true. be honest uh, right, like so... for, for example i i'm just playing as no and i get mm -hmm. support points because i yeah. knock down somebody it's yeah, true. all right really... so b before we go to the to the support points let, let's show the the mvp stats first right I, I got them on the screen um so mvp is very interesting because um it will also show you even for the um the lower ranked teams which players on their team actually do really well right because um, at least that player is top one um, on their team quite often. So for Surf Slayer, for example, we have Flare Star, who has been MVP four times for Surf Slayer in the whole season. Remember seven rounds, so 14 games. So that means that he's been uh, like in about 30% of the games he's been MVP. And for Slavs, it's RGI Deja Vu, also with four MVPs. So they are, you could say the MVPs for the tournament, even despite that those two players didn't even make it to the finals. But for their teams, they have been very, uh, very good. And then you got uh, from Blame Elias, Blood Story, Bravo, Fallen Ronin, La Lama the Cray, Dealer for Life. And then from, oh, sorry, those are from La Lama, from, Blame, from Blame Elias with two MVPs. Um, also two MVPs is Dealer for Life from Pontguard, Payan from Pontguard, Nasu Danner from Triarchy, RGI from Menzo from Triarchy, and Kicker and MX New from We Are Clowns as well, all with two MVPs. 
and then we of course we have plenty of heroes um, or players with one MVP. So there's 11 players with uh, multiple MVPs in our database right now. Um, so that's something that's very interesting. And then you mentioned support points, so let's bring it up. Oh, I gotta congratulate uh, Nikos Blue here from Triarchy, uh, actually on my team with the support points. So, but how much does this say, right? That, that's that's what you're questioning as well, like. Uh, yeah, it, it is yeah, because it's very, it's kind of interesting what exactly, like what, what unit mm. he used or what, what does he, what he was doing to get these support yeah, points. Yeah, exactly. Kinda inter that, that would be interesting, for example, yeah. Yeah, uh, like now, because I, I was, uh, I saw that there were alchemy, alch mm -hmm. alchemists were used in the yeah. finals, for example. Mm -hmm. So I I'm wondering if how much HP could they mm -hmm. like recover if, if it's really that impactful. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that could be very interesting. Yeah. yeah. And again, this is, the, this is the, the, the scientist or the researcher uh, inside of you who wants to know every specific <laughs> detail yeah, about I, the support points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just need to figure it out. Um, well, maybe uh, we can figure it out with my games at, at some point. But um, So what I do know about these players with uh, high support points is that um, at least some of them, like uh, Temple Shot, he plays long sword a lot of the time, so he's healing a lot, um, tries to do a lot of um, like engages for the team, I guess. Um, Ugura is a pole axe, so he's definitely seeing the, the enemy team a lot, and he's also making a lot of big plays. He's also getting the MVP a lot, but he's also supporting his team, I guess, a lot. Um, Eagle from Triarchy is a, a longbow, so he's quite often using range units. Um, Dealer for Life is a short bow, so he's spamming the CC as well. This can also give you more support points. So I'm definitely seeing like different type of players by looking at the support points top 10 compared to the hero kills top 10, for example, right? Where you see players like, like Amya and like Sol uh, who are well known for their ability to 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 kill to kill the heroes yeah i'm wondering because uh i recall that uh, for example uh, like at least for in the finals or semi-finals mm -hmm. i saw that there were a few players uh, like who were by looking at units they have were designated supports like with alchemies mm -hmm. and things like that yeah and i'm wondering uh, how much support they could get but uh, i'm just trying to find uh, quickly some uh, some example but uh, i think that that won't work <laughs> yeah, I'll, yeah i, I just can actually like, just like yeah I'll, I'll try to get you the one of the screenshots from from the finals but yeah definitely it, it, it it's true like even Payan who is one of the best uh, players from na he's playing the pike he's most of the times getting the mvps a lot but he actually is actually decided to play the glaive a lot, which is um, he plays it as a support class, so he was also supporting the team way more. Um, I, I right, we, we noticed from talking with him, um, and he definitely didn't get the MVP in the first three games, but in the last game he switched to Pike, I believe, and then he he did get the MVP, for example. So it's. Yeah, it, it yeah. definitely. I guess we, we need issues. to do the killing for MVP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, I'm trying to find it. Oh yeah, you were talking about the pawn card game, right? Yeah, yeah, you gotta get the pawn card game. All right. Um, copy image. Let me send it to you, and then you can take a look. Um, here, there you go. This is game one, I believe, that you that you are seeing right now. Yeah, there is some. So something some that's high support. Yeah, there is high support points on, for example, was it Slide QT from We Are Clowns? Yeah, like as you said, Pian had almost thousand, for example. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, that, I would say it's very nice that they added these support points, mm -hmm. like, like by the way. I yeah. would say. Yeah, I gotta say as well. Like it, it, say, yeah. it's, it shows that you can be a different player. It's not only about unit kills. It's also about how you support your team and support points. Does sh it does show different players at the top if you if you look at that uh, at that stat? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we, like while MVP is quite important because 
like in the end, uh, like very uh, many matches uh, were ending with like no units and mm -hmm. so on. Uh, and then you have, let's say, deathmatch. And yeah. it's more about like, like uh, you can like be a good team player, you know, what you are doing, how to use your units, <laughs> like, like, le le let's say as a general, the team know what it's doing, has some strategy that it works or it doesn't. Yeah, exactly. I guess when it doesn't, then you end up in the deathmatch on the cup. Yeah. And then you just need to be a better player yourself to just <laughs> like win with other players. So uh, I, I guess that, that that's uh, when MVPs are uh, important because they can in this like uh, final st stages of the match, it's decided by who has just more, just have more skill. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, like, per like personally. Yep. Uh, so it's also, I guess there is, like you said before, there are some players which regularly got MVP. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess when the, the moment when you have this, uh, like they have, like you see that they have a lot more than other players. So I guess it means two things or they uh, are using the best units in the team <laughs> <laughs> or they are the best players. Yeah. Yeah, yeah very true. Yeah, yeah. So I do think that the stats do show a lot, a lot of different things, and that's really nice. Um, so um, something else that I really like uh, is uh, the devs, actually, because the devs. Yeah, I, I was about to say that. Yeah, the, the devs can say so many things, right? Because if you look at the devs, uh, I just showed it a little bit. At first place is my teammate Lexa, and then second place Denner. And I can tell you two things about those players. Um, actually, Trike is in a uh, death list uh, with a lot of players. Okay, we're dying too much on Triarchy team. That's that's pretty obvious. Uh, top ten is Triarchy. Top eleven is Triarchy. Yeah, yes. there's a, the, 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 even there is a big gap. Yeah, there's uh, a very big there gap. Yeah, not many forty something. Kills. Yeah, exactly. So, um, uh, the yeah, so there's a, like two pl three players with forty plus deaths. Uh, then there is one, two, three, four players with thirty to forty. And then everybody else has like 30 or less kills. And then I'll see if I would stretch this a little bit, like 40. So I'll look at the top 40. And then you see that it will range from 10, 13 to 27 on, on 10 place. So the top 10 players that got the most killed uh, definitely die a lot. Um, but so something that's interesting is that Lexa, Danner, Ogamias, and Sibi, uh, that was just me, we are all players that try to force engages. I know that from playing with them, right? So um, it's not like, and, and the, like these three players, like Lexa, Danner, and Oga, they are all the team captains. They're all pretty good players and they try to like lead our team into, into the battle um, and show the other players how to engage the fights. Clearly it doesn't, really work out because they die so often <laughs> it's, it's not healthy yeah, maybe it works but exactly. it's not healthy it, yeah it's <laughs> not healthy that's for sure so um so it could mean so many different things right and uh, it could mean that their team doesn't follow it up correctly or it could mean that they engage too often or maybe they're called out of position you would have to watch the games to know why they die so often um again from playing with them yeah, I, I know a... why they died but yeah I have a thought, but uh, at first you need to uh, teach me the rules of this tournament because mm -hmm. apparently I don't know them. Because uh, are there uh, some limit of depths? Uh, I think that mm. I heard something that like free that after you cannot respawn or you, something like that. Yeah, not always. So um, some maps are uh, can only be played with the CBL rules. And that means that you can only die three times, and then you're out of, ah, the, okay, out of the game. Okay, but most okay, okay. most maps uh, can be played with uh, with a no limit death. So and so most games were played on a no on no limit to the death uh, count. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Because uh, I was confused because one game I, I saw uh, that there was talking about like a limit, and then mm -hmm. in other game I saw that people they much more. So I thought that there is some. Yeah. Uh, not only on CPL maps, yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, well, because uh, what, what I'm thinking, uh, like, 
because these deaths or lives uh, of the players, especially at the start, are also some kind of resource. Like you have some traps you can use yeah. in the game. And like at first, the response are not that long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can also, I feel like you can you treat it as a resource you have at your disposal. So. Uh, for example, like uh, you, you can sacrifice the player to kill something yeah. and it's like worth trade. And if you, uh, like, let's say you are losing, but you are not dying much, mm -hmm. then it's, it's, I wouldn't say that's a good thing. Yeah. Because it seems like you are not taking yeah. risk. You yeah, could... exactly. You're just not so, engaging so, so, or dodging fights. Uh, yeah. I guess. I guess when looking at the stat, uh, the, these dev stats, uh, I, I would assume that there is some sweet spot where you should be. Like, if there is too high, it's bad. But it's too low, it's also bad because yeah. you are like not using uh, this ability to sacrifice yourself to kill something. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, like you said, you could look at the the strongest teams, for example, and try to see how often do they die, how often do they get kills, how often do they uh, yeah, how many support points do they get? Do they play? Do they have specific, um, like you said, players that actually try to go for supporting the team instead of getting the kills? Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that all makes for interesting uh, an analysis. That's that's for sure. Yeah. All right. So um, okay, we looked at the hero kills. We looked at the deaths. We looked at assists, unit killed, support points. Um, is there anything else we should take a look at that we haven't uh, done yet? Mm. I think what those... we have. <laughs> I think those are the most what important ones, right? Have. Yeah. Um, nah, let me see at the. Uh, we, we also got participation, screen. but I guess that one doesn't really matter. Ah, but it's not really. Yeah, yeah, that one doesn't really matter, right? Yeah. Mm. I know. I I guess that that's the most. Yeah. like meaningful because uh, yeah, let's true. say we could look about assists but they are kind of random so mm -hmm. yeah they are yeah uh, well we have we could get the assists as well uh, i guess yeah um so for assists we got uh soul on, on number one uh let me sh get it on the screen as well assists here we go uh so for assists we got Soul from Blame Alias. Again, this is a lot of players from Blame Alias. Uh, let's extend yeah, because it. Because they have a lot of kills, so yeah, they exactly. have more assists. So and and they of... play a lot together as well. Like when they when they fight, they fight together. Or they die together. <laughs> um, but they kill more than they die. And then starting from place actually 12, we have King Smaxi from We Are Clowns. That's the first different team that we have a player from with 85 assists. And Soul is first with 138. So that's a that's a big gap, right? And then let's see, it goes down, and then we have like, what do we have here? More Blamelias, Pond Guard, Dealer for Life, seventy three, Blamelias, seven again, seventy two, Slavs, We Are Clowns, Blamelias, Slavs, Pond Guard. Yeah. So then we get more different teams that have more assists. But again, uh, in the top forty, I can only see teams that are in the top four. So it's only the the higher placed teams that have a lot of assists. Which makes sense again because they yeah, right now they live longer, they fight more, they kill more. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm wondering the like the stat which could be kind of interesting mm -hmm. uh, is something like which match had the most deaths, mm. like on both sides, like which mo which one was the most bloody one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, I wonder yeah, if I can like, get that one. Uh, I, yeah, but I uh, wouldn't know. Would how, I wouldn't know how, how to show it right now. But that that would be nice. Or what map had the most deaths or the highest unit kills? Or yeah, oh, yeah. That, that that could be interesting. That would be also nice. Uh, yeah. I guess we can we can we can find it later. And yeah, exactly. Like, so I guess post in the description. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So um, for next season, we, we 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 will have this tool figured out, right? And we can. Um, because th that, that is the goal with this. Um, basically, I want to use this database, the tool that, that we are creating right now, to be able to show everybody what players are really good and why they are good and why the good teams are so good, but also 
maybe why the the teams that are not playing good or very well uh, what they have to do differently like maybe they die too often like trike or something else and uh, stats like you have proven today um, do help like the information that you can take out of it uh, does help you to become a better player or allows good players to become even better um, and that's the goal i guess uh, like you said it's about giving you the opportunity to make the best choice I think that's really yeah, nice I would say it would be nice if uh, teams also gave suggestions which stats are actually useful to like improve. Yeah, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, like what stats? Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll ask. So th yeah, so with this, uh, anyone who's listening, um, let us know what stats you like to see more of or differently, and we'll see if we can like get them figured out. It would definitely be interesting to see um, what units players used to get the kills right but that's really hard to get because then you would have to get something from every single player out of a game and that's that's not possible right now but we'll see all right um so to sum this up uh, and we'll finish it with that as well um i'll ha hand out some unofficial uh, awards to the players remember the database is not complete but with what he got right now we got four best so hero killer amya with 48 hero kills for most deaths we got lexa you are very heroic with 45 deaths in total. We got most assists, 138 soul. We got most unit kills with 976 blood story. And the support master of the tournament is Nikos Blue with 5,944 5, support points. So kudos to all those players. Um, I'll figure out if I can get you something like an emote on the Discord or whatever. Um, and I hope you enjoy this, uh, this small shout out. Uh, and again, oh yeah, and also the most MVPs is Flare Star from Surf Slayer and RGI Deja Vu from Slavs. Both have four MVPs uh, in the regular season. All right, so that's all the stats concluded that we got right now for you. Um, so I'll take this away. Um, Kituwich, anything you would like to add at the end of the podcast? Anything you would like to say? Uh, please use all the units in the tournaments. Thank you. Yes, I agree. <laughs> so with that, uh, thank you very much. If you do. Uh, I hope to see diff a lot of the more different units and different strategies over the next season. Um, I'm looking forward to it very, very much. Um, over the next two weeks, we will have um, Blake from Chocolate Paladins to talk about the Rustic Division that is starting next season. And we will also have uh, Heather from Jack Ultras to talk about the Feudal Division. And we will actually be making tier lists. So that's going to be really interesting. Um, hope to see you soon. Support us on the Discord. Go there. Um, and also, please do go to my Patreon if you want to uh, support the whole tournament. Um, if we get more Patreons, we can do more cool stuff like this. Invest more hours. Maybe I can pay some people to do some stuff as well. Who knows? And hopefully, we can also get some prizes. Like actual prizes. Um, so go to the Patreon. Support the league if you can. And of course, go to Kitoich, his YouTube channel, um, to make sure that you know what you're doing with the units. Um, with that, thank you very much. See you next week and enjoy everything that you're doing on Conquest Blade. I wanna taste the pain, I think I'm seeing all red. Two bullets in a gun, one shot.